more PE money, going into North American translation, localization, and healthcare interpreting is now going to be available for retail investors to invest in. They interviewed a dozen companies or so in that voice space before choosing GM Voices. And welcome everyone to the pod of the company that is called Slater. Hi there. Hey Florian, how you doing? I'm uh, I'm okay. I'm in a tropical greenhouse and it's yep. getting more tropical <laughs> by the minute. So this is going to be a short one. <laughs> same here. Yeah, same here. Windows are closed so you don't get the building noises. But yeah, it's quite when, sweltering. Uh, yeah, windows are closed because these guys continue to rip up tram tracks out there. And uh, yeah, we mm. don't want that to uh, to come onto the pot. <laughs> so... Yeah, today, short episode for fans only, um, and we'll have an amazing guest on next week again. But this week, we're going to be talking, it's going to be just you and me, Esther. Yes, the originals. Yep. The originals, going back to the roots, uh, talking about Blend, going into voice services, another major CEO change in the localization industry after last week's RWS change, and more PE money going into North American translation, localization, and her- healthcare interpreting is now going to be available for retail investors to invest in. Um, after, I think, Stratus was, no, they were, they delisted. What happened to them? They were acquired, yes, by AMN, exactly. So now there's a, there's another option for investors to go uh, yeah, into healthcare interpreting. <laughs> We've got a new option if we're really desperate to invest in a listed. You got a new one. Healthcare yeah. interpreting company. Ex- exactly. So first, let's talk about Blend, um, formerly known as One Hour Translation. Then they bought we, what we title as the company that recorded Siri, a company called mm. GM Voices. Uh, what's going yeah. on there, Esther? Well, yeah, like you said, they acquired uh, GM Voices. Um, it was a deal that closed in May and announced this week in June. Um, so GM Voices is a US-based recorded voice and audio localization provider. Um, so as you said, I mean, you gave the example of Siri. I think that was one of their kind of, you know, massive major client projects. Uh, but they also um, do things like, well, they provide voice and localization services for telecommunications, for example, when you've got things like um, callers who get access to pre-recorded messages without actually talking to anyone in multiple languages. They do things like explainer and marketing videos, podcasts as well, subtitling, dubbing, um, and things like this. So yeah, it's definitely um, a move into voice um, for for Blend. Uh, and the CEO, Yaya Tal, he was talking about GM Voice's impressive client list, talking about they, uh, their technology partnerships um, for that they've held for quite a number of years and that they've got thousands of um, voice actors as well on their books. Um, and it seems quite a deliberate move as well. They, they were telling us that the deal is the result of a methodical search process that took about 18 months. They interviewed a dozen companies or so in that voice space before choosing GM voices. I think it's a good move. Yeah. Uh, it's also in this kind of broader data, AI adjacent areas of localization. So I think it, it does make sense. And if they've been looking at this for 18 months and did a lot of due diligence on a dozen companies, um, you know, looks like they feel they settled on the right, the right target. Um, hey, I wonder if Susan Bennett was somebody who worked for GM Voices. Do you know who Susan Bennett is? No. Should she I? Was a, no. <laughs> I just pulled it out. <laughs> Literally, while we were speaking, uh, yeah. I remember there was this whole story around the woman who says she was the voice of Siri. Oh. And yeah. and then there was a couple of media stories around it. And so I pulled one up that's from 2017 or something. And so it says, Bennett said she didn't know she voiced Siri until Apple integrated it into the iPhone in 2011. And then, quote unquote, a colleague emailed me about Siri and said, hey, we've been playing around with this new Apple iPhone or with this new Apple phone. Isn't this you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, Imagine the shock. <laughs> it's like, hey, that's me. That's yeah. me. <laughs> it's yeah. I think we 
we might have spoken about it on the Paper Cup podcast. I don't remember. It just sounds very fresh that uh, that I've I've spoken. I about I think this we did talk issue. about it. Yeah, somebody, yeah. yeah, this kind of rights and fair the usage, the rights management. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you if you just go and you you basically quote unquote give them the voice. I mean, if you become the voice of like. You know, a phone that gets sold to billions of people, well, maybe not billions, but like hundreds of millions of people that you probably want to have some royalties from it. Anyway, maybe um, I wonder how that factors into the purchase price if they have like a library of voices, but, you know, they probably couldn't comment on that. Anyway, interesting acquisition. Congrats to uh, Yar Tal. That's his first deal as CEO of Blend. So Let's see if they continue. They have, what, 150 people now? Uh, and they said they were going to hire another 50 in 2021. So Blend's growing to like 150, 200 people this year. Yeah. Adding the GM to... was about 30. I don't think they shared any other financial metrics, but in terms of size, GM is 30. 30 people. Okay. And mostly, yeah, yeah North America based, right? US. Yeah. yeah US. Cool. So uh, not so cool is that uh, Andrew Day, the CEO of, or former CEO now of Keywords, the big uh, gaming, you know, operations slash localization company in the UK that, that's publicly listed. He, he retired now uh, after an extended leave of absence due to health reasons. So I think we learned about that a few months ago. And apparently now he's, he's, they said he's bringing forward a longer term retirement plan and and he's uh, well stepping back from uh, immediately from the CEO role, uh, and there is an advisory board for about six months initially. And a gentleman called John Haug and Sonia Sedler. Uh, John Haug is the CFO, and Sonia Sedler, the COO, will serve as joint interim CEOs until they search for for their next leader. And, you know that comes after the news last week of RWS also changing their CEO. So mm. that those are two big plays in the localiz localization space that are now uh, under new leadership. And, you know, the situation obviously is different at keywords that, that you know, it, it was unexpected. And Andrew Day built this up from, from the very beginning. I remember looking at some of the, watching some of the early videos when, when he kind of pitched, like in 2013, the vision for the company and said, look, we're going to... Mm do this uh, we're gonna we're gonna list i think that was 2013 and then we're gonna start acquiring yeah. companies in the space and you know well that's exactly what they did and they grew from a, a, a literally a very very small uh mainly i think it was localization were the roots right to now like a kind of full supply chain uh game production localization not production uh, what's the right word there yeah I mean, development what, game development development um well i don't think we should call them developers because they're not actually developing the game like they're Doing all the adjacent work, the probably services. not too much uh, the yeah, the services component, right? So yeah, they they beautifully executed on that strategy and was led by Andrew Day from the start. So, um, so yeah, so now he's uh, he's retiring and these uh, uh, two individuals taking over until they find a a new a new full time CEO. And things are things are looking good. Revenues are up fourteen percent. They said they added a, a no to the. Um, to the, to the notice around uh, the CEO change that, you know, 11% up to what 2020 was 300 and hang on, $442 million in, in revenue. Um, and in 2021, they had a quote unquote, very good start, continuing the momentum from the second half of 2020. Uh, total revenue for the first four months of the current year was up 36%, of which 25% is organic growth. I mean, mm. That's a quarter increase in revenue organically. I, I would call it's that like a hundred million dollars or something. I would call that a very good start. <laughs> right? that, that's that's a fantastic. Oh wait, no, not hundred million dollars. Sorry, like hundred. Yeah, over the year would be. Yeah, yeah. but well, a fantastic a a start good. to the year. You know, I haven't seen this from anyone else, and and so we'd be looking for how the the localization unit has done, which is around a third if you include localization well, testing. Yeah, exactly. So. The the one called localization is is more the kind of text based localization where they've got audio services which does dubbing and a number of other things and the testing unit as well and combined they're about a third. Yeah, um, yeah. I think localization the text gate stuff had a bit of a rocky road in 2020 and that was the only unit that actually declined over the year. Um, but then it I think it rebounded and returned to growth at the in the second half of 2020. So Got it. hopefully all going well. 
And so if you, yeah, I mean, they, you know, if you were confident enough in, in their, in, in Andrew Day's ability to execute on that strategy in 2013 and you had invested, uh, let's say you had invested, I don't know, $5,000, you'd be yep. up uh, 40X. So, you know. 40X. Wow, that's yes. pretty good. So you'd have $200,000 now in the bank. So you've given in eight, them. Over eight years, basically. Over eight years. That's that's quite the return. That beats uh, US government bonds or UK government bonds or literally any I government bonds. If uh, had £5,000 to spare and knowledge of keywords in 2013. <laughs> yeah, we need to find the keywords of 2021. Let's do it. <laughs> and then like go all in and then, you know, no. <laughs> then we have a different podcast in 2032, like, I don't know, how to, <laughs> something else, <laughs> an how investment to make podcast. How to money investing in the language industry. Yeah, uh, different podcast. Oh, okay. Other yeah. people that are looking to invest, sitting on capital, um, looking for targets are Triple Tree Capital Partners. Those names, yeah, those, a bit fun, of a, na those fun names are just hilarious. It's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> Triple Tree. It's always like oak tree or like black, you know, I mean, you got tree. the big one, like so black one. <laughs> rock and, and all this stuff. Like, I think it's, it's meant to instill confidence and like a kind of substance, it's, it's right? Evoking some kind of wholesomeness as well. Yes. Triple tree. Triple tree. Capital partners. Yeah. Well, what's going on with triple tree capital partners? All right. We're going to call them TTCP for sure, I think, because that's an acronym that I've seen. But... Uh, they have invested in Proprio, Proprio language services. That's a US based, uh, language service provider that does mainly healthcare, well, predominantly healthcare in interpreting. Um, the news of the deal closed on, uh, well, the deal closed on the 1st of June and they just announced this week. They did not want to share, declined to share the financial metrics and the total raised. So we don't really know how much money we're talking Why? about here. You should um, tell us. Tell yeah. Us. Come on, guys. Well, we did ask. But okay. um, we covered them reasonably recently in April, um, Propio, when they acquired Vocalink, which is another right. US based uh, translation and interpreting provider. Um, so, Propio pre Vocalink had about $15 million US dollars in 2020 in revenues. Um, Reasonable growth of nearly 3% from 2019. They're predicting strong growth um, in 2021. Again, uh, yeah, looking to hire, looking to grow to over 100 people by the end of the year. Um, but back to the funding. So you've got um, TTCP, if I get that right. Um, it's their first investment in the language services space. Um, and they said that they were looking, well, they identify demand uh, as growing and they see an increasing need for language services and, and interpreting in particular because of regulatory uh, requirements. They are, I think we said already, they're a healthcare investor and they have a focus on growth stage companies. They've got about 15, 16 portfolio companies at the moment. And includes, uh, which I thought was quite interesting, Clinythink, which is using NLP to automate the review of health records. So they're kind of combining healthcare and tech and hmm. um, certain certain um, advances there as well. Um, so this is yeah. appropriate. So very heavy again in, in healthcare. Mm. How much? Like what's the proportion there? So 70% healthcare um, of their revenues and 80% interpreting. Wow. With the so rest being translation. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this whole uh, kind of the play for the U.S. healthcare access mm. market is very, I mean, it's it's a huge competitive? play. It's very competitive, It's but it's also just such a... It's a large market. Everyone, not everyone, but a yeah. lot of companies are are going in, and the, and the language component is a key component. Just imagine if Europe had like a not a not a centralized, but a somewhat unified healthcare landscape mm. in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, in the U.S., yeah, I, okay, maybe I'm going on a limb here. I, I'm not super familiar with with that system, but I guess there are certain regulatory areas that are federal instead of state, right? So you you have some certainty if you you can you can cover the entire U.S. with with certain products, mm. uh, and then there's things like uh, Medicare, I guess that that are funding some of these businesses. 
um, or I mean, funding things that these businesses uh, produce, right, on, on a federal level. I mean, imagine if something like that existed in Europe. In, in Europe, if you want to go pan-European with, with things like that, it's super tricky. You'd have to, you know, like... So rap- many different laws, jurisdictions, so languages, many different laws and jurisdictions, all of right? Mm. That's why it's very hard for anybody to really scale in this space across all of, you know, the European Union and now obviously with, mm. with Britain out again. Um, so, yeah. Good. So for them, they, uh, again, this is a private equity firm. I think they, they engaged a company called Mariner Capital Advisors, uh, appropriate it is, right? To, to help them, yeah. um, to help them through this process of, uh, raising that money from, from, from the private equity guys. So, yeah. I mean, that's how it works, right? You go out, you, you get an advisor, that advisor connects you to a bunch of funds and, uh, and then you, you know, pick the one that, 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 that's the best fit and that's, that's willing to invest. So. Mm. I guess that's a that's a proper smart well, way to do that. Should maybe re- mention as well it's the first time that Propio has taken on any kind of external funding um, since in like twenty years of twenty nineteen ninety eight they were founded. So yeah. twenty I think ninety seven ninety eight so like twenty plus years of operating. Um, kind of why wouldn't you right? I mean imagine you you <laughs> you start a business in nineteen ninety eight. All of your money is tied up in the business. If you're the founder, uh, you probably you know if 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 paid out decent salaries, et cetera, but a lot of your actual wealth is tied up in that business. So what, what this also creates is what people call like a liquidity event. Um, like if mm. you, you know, imagine you're a founder, you own the business outright. I don't know who owned Propia, but just more generally speaking. Um, and and then then you sell part of it, uh, the majority to <clears throat> to a fund. Obviously, you're going to get cash, right? So you, you you get some of that liquidity, some of that value <clears throat> value out of the business and, uh, and eventually maybe, you know, can... Um, yeah, I mean, this is is, is de risking because otherwise you have all of your eggs in one basket, right? You get your salary from the business, and much of your wealth is tied up in the business as well. So, mm-hmm. good for them. And staying with you know U.S. healthcare, something which I should probably read up on before I start commenting <laughs> on podcasts. But we got this cloud break um, company that. Did the spec and now specs another super complicated topic. It's this kind of empty shell company that's listed and then you reverse kind of merge into it. And so mm. you get to be traded on a stock exchange without, without actually having to go through an IPO. Mm. You know, who would have thought we'd be talking it's, about I this think on they're the language industry popular. podcast? I've heard, seen it more coverage generally in the business I, news. I heard it's kind of, it's going in cycles. I think it it was popular Uh like 20 years ago and then it kind of disappeared and now it's coming back again. It's just like some, Mm. what used to be a somewhat obscure structure kind of making a comeback again. But again, commenting outside of my core expertise here. (laughs) Uh, Again, a VRI, Video Remote Interpreting Provider, Cloudbreak, they have have this Marty uh, uh, system. They merged with a company called, I mean, this uh, this spec company called UpHealth and then there was uh, and and um, well, they merged with UpHealth wa- via this SPAC company called Gig Capital. So UpHealth and Cloudbreak merged into this SPAC company and now form yeah. UpHealth, which trades yeah. on the ticker. El- UpHealth was yeah. already a provider of digital healthcare in its own right. Not there you go. Not the empty shell. Yeah. Yeah. So this was not the empty shell. So now it's trading under the the, the ticker UPH. So if you want to invest in a company that's providing um, telemedicine, like uh, like Cloudbreak, I mean, mostly telemedicine and, uh, and remote uh, remote interpreting, and the other one is doing more kind of physician offices, education, government agencies, some of these uh, other um, well, they do other services. Then we'll go and invest in UPH. We'll be reading their statements and get some more, you know, in open course. data yeah. on uh, on. <laughs> On how that business is going, we, we cover AMN quite with uh, with Stratus quite quite regularly when they when yeah they and, lang- and language line as well right and, and so again just to close off remote interpreting is quite a hot space in the US. I mean you had also big uh, language solutions acquire Language Link, which is mostly an over the phone interpreting company. Uh, you know twenty seven mm-hmm. million dollars back in May. Well, back in May, that's that's just a few barely, weeks ago. A, yeah. barely a month ago, right? So Jeff Brinks mm. in that space as well. So lots going on in in healthcare interpreting in the US. And that's Indeed. it from today's pod of Slater. Slater Pod. See you again next week where we will have a fantastic guest. So See you thanks, then. Esther.
Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye.